Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I wanna to share with you a little bit about some things that, you know, just a weekend update about what happened in our garden on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this weekend. But also, I wanted to talk a little bit about placement of some of the shrubs that I bought recently. So come along with me and let's take a look at how things are shaping up here in our backyard renovation. Well, I forgot to take some before footage before I started working today, but my project for right now is to uh, mimic this side of the stage over here. So um, the old border of grass went from the middle of the stage edge back and around that way. And along here we had four hostas, a bunch of liriope, a bunch of violets, and one astilbe. So I've taken out the astilbe and I've put it in another spot in the yard. I've taken out the four hostas and they're laying right there. I've taken out the liriope and it's all laying over here. And I've taken out most, but not yet all, of the violets and they're sitting right here. My next plan is to take out grass up to the edge where it's going to be finally, over at least to the viburnum. So all of this is going to come out today. This um, golden mound arborvitae is going to move forward and out a little bit so that it's about in the center of the side, roughly where the old uh, lawn edge used to be. About The ball, root ball will be about right here. And then, um, it's actually laying down right now, this blue point juniper is going to go uh, roughly where the golden mound arborvitae is right now. And that will mimic the dragon lady that's over on the other corner. So we'll have a pyramidal shape here and a rounded shape here, and that will mimic what's happening here with the pyramidal shape and the mounded shape. So that's my project. So I got the sod out that I was hoping to get out um, from the stage over to the viburnum and down to the new edge. But look what I found while I was digging that sod out of there. Do you see all those little holes in the earth? Do you know what those are? These are cicadas emerging from the ground. We are in the Brood X 17 year cicada year. And uh, all these little holes are cicadas that have crawled up out of the ground and are getting ready to start their mating process. Up in the trees, they'll be loudly calling to each other. Actually, the males call to the females. So the females pick their favorite male based on how much they like his call the really loud calls and then they mate and then she lays her eggs inside my small trees so yeah we got to wrap up our trees here in a little bit but not until I hear the buzzing start anyway cicada season woohoo yeah so I started digging my hole to move my shrub and I found cicada this one is not yet emerged on his own. I've kind of unearthed him. He's probably not happy. He may not live. And here is one that I think I accidentally chopped in half. Oh well. So that's what a cicada looks like as it's getting ready to emerge and wreak havoc on the plant kingdom. All right, got my hole dug. Now I just need to dig the shrub out and see if my hole's big enough. So let's do that. Well, that was easy. This shrub is apparently uh, not very deeply rooted. So it came out pretty quick, just a couple of shovel holes. And uh, so I just need to get some compost in the bottom of that hole, get some biotone in there and put this puppy into the ground. Okay, making progress. I've got the arborvitae in place, in its hole, happy. And I've dug the hole for the blue point. So making progress. I need to get some compost in there, get some biotone in there and put this little blue point guy into his hole too. Yay, let's go. All right, I've got the gold mound arborvitae moved. I've got the blue point juniper installed and the snowball viver viburnum is here. And I popped in some of the wild violets that I have laying around. My next task is to figure out where exactly I wanna put this Laura Pedalum. Uh, the red foliage is going to look beautiful with the blue foliage of the blue point with the golden chartreuse that the summer color of this golden mound uh, arborvitae will have, and then the true green leaves of 
the uh, viburnum. The viburnum will be eventually limbed up to be a tree form, but of course this will take a couple of years to get there. I'm thinking I want to put the lower petalum kind of like right there. So it'll be red, blue, chartreuse, and green. Also what that will do, it'll grow to be about six feet uh, around in a big ball, and that will help hide uh, and create some screening from the pathway that's going to go through the arbor and off to the right and back there uh, where the hammock is going to be. So it'll be nice to have some screening for the hammock from the top of the yard looking down. You won't be able to see that hammock so much. So I'm thinking it's going to go roughly right here, but I just want to verify that my pathways are roughly in place. <laughs> I've taken every piece of item that I could possibly find down here without walking too far away to try to lay out my pathways. The arbor is four feet wide. It's about um, 18 inches deep, 20 inches deep. It's not quite as deep as I've got it marked out here. Um, the path will come in here and it'll Y. It'll go left and right. There will be a, um, an obelisk right here, pyramid shape wooden structure that's going to have a climbing rose on it right in the center and then when you go off to the right here you'll come around and the hammock will be right here these azaleas this one and that one are moving uh, once they're done flowering i'm going to take them out and move them somewhere else and so this pathway will i mean it's going to be still mulch everything's going to be mulched it's just that there won't be plants here and this will be a space where you can walk and so you'll come down here. The hammock will be here um, between the redbud tree and the ink berries. And I just put these gold dust akubas in this morning. So I think this pathway is roughly in the place where I want it. I don't think it's gonna be this wide. I think I will have more planting area than that. But let me just turn back around here. I, what I'm mainly concerned about is this right side edge of it. Um, choosing the right spot for that and then as far as this left side of it we can pull that in and make it a narrower path or wider for a wider path whatever we want but I mainly want to get this right edge of it laid out so that I know where my boundaries are for the planting area and so I'm going to place that potted Laura Petalum where I think I want it and then I'll stand back and look and see if it's a good spot okay I've placed it pretty close to the gold mound Gold Mound is just about at full size. It might grow another six inches wide, but not much bigger than that. Lower Petalum gets six by six, but it takes a while. Also, you can limit up if you need to. So I think if that center is three feet away from the edge of this, I think that's fine. And I think that's roughly what it is. Scale's deceiving out here in this big yard. So I think three feet away from there is good and away from the blue point is good. And then this snowball um, it's going to take a while for them to meet, and once they do meet, I'll start pruning up the snowball so it'll be taller. So I'm thinking that that is a pretty good spot. And then the benefit of that placement for the lower petalum is that as you walk around this pathway, there's still plenty of planting area here. I think that pink azalea is actually going to come down uh, roughly right here so that as this grows taller into a tree, it'll provide shade for the azalea. Also, the pink of the azalea against the maroon of the lower petalum will be really nice. Somewhere in here is where that pink azalea is gonna end up. So there will be room for that, plus still more perennials um, available space in here. So I'm thinking I'm converging on a pretty good plan here. Yeah, I think I think this is coming together. So I'm working on the hole for my lower petalum. I kind of wanted it kind of like more directly behind the center of these two, like right here. But when I put my spade down in there, there's some really uh, significant tree roots from the old elm trees that we just had taken down. So my hole has to move that way. So going to end up a little bit more behind the gold mound than I wanted it to be. I kind of wanted it like right here. It has to go that way because of the tree roots. So it is what it is. I think once it's big, it'll be fine. But for the short term, it's going to feel a little bit awkward that these are so lined up. Oh, well. Okay. And Laura Petalum is in. It's in an okay spot, I guess. I kind of wanted it more this way, but darn tree roots got in my way. 
So this little corner is coming together. I've gotten things transplanted. I've got things newly planted. I have four hostas. Some of them are gonna go here. I'm trying to decide about my fairy rose that I just got. I'm thinking, okay, you have to put on your imagination caps. You have to imagine the trellis, the arbor is here, seven feet tall right here. And it's gonna have a climbing rose on it and it's gonna be pink. And I'm thinking that right here in front of the viburnum, in front of the gold mound, kind of right in this little open spot, would be a great place to put one of the fairy roses. And then the next question is if I do that, should I put the other one right over here in front of the dogwood tree? That might be a really nice surrounding around the arbor. The other choices for the fairy roses are up here by this grouping, which hasn't yet come together, but we've got the limelight hydrangea, which will grow nice and big, six feet or eight feet in its fullest form. Could put one of the fairy roses here and one of them there with the hydrangea in between. So two fairy roses here or two fairy roses here. That's the question. I'm gonna have to stew on that one, talk to my husband, see what he thinks. But really it takes a lot of imagination to get that far in the mental picture, doesn't it? So anyway, things are coming together. I went ahead and staked out and roped out what I think will be roughly the paths that go through these gardens. And the purpose of this is so that I can visualize where to plant shrubs as I'm putting in more permanent shrub installations. Perennials are more movable, but shrubs I really want to get right the first time if I can. So I've uh, laid out a rough estimate of where the borders of the paths will be as they go through here. So you can see we have, um, this, I mean, they're going to be more curved than this. These are really rough, but uh, this is generally the idea. So we'll have lots of planting room in here. Um, I might end up putting a little bench back in that corner, in which case we'll have a little meandering side path right there. But um, for now, probably no bench. But this gives me an idea where I can plant shrubs in the near term. Um, I'm not real happy with the way this Y is coming out. But again, this is just a rough estimate and it's not... Sorry, I'm backing up and stepping on clods of grass and stuff. It's not perfect, but I do want that uh, obelisk to be centered right here on the pathway, and then it'll Y off that way and that way. It's not going to be symmetric because, um, you know, these are different areas. This one's going to be more gradual. This one's going to be more immediate. So um, anyway, rough idea. This helps me plant shrubs. Well, I got some more things put into the ground. I'm up here by the limelight hydrangea up at the corner of the fence, the top of the yard, and I've put in another blue point juniper and another Laura Petalum. These are the ever red Laura Petalum, this one and the one down by the stage. And again, I think that the dark plum red colors here will be a really nice uh, complement to this blue green um, of the uh, blue point juniper. So that's good. And then also down this way, I went ahead and put in the new camellia into the ground over here by the tea olive. So this is the Turandot camellia. And uh, this is a beautiful coral pink color, fully double red. I mean, sorry, fully double. And uh, that bloom is on its way out. And there's one bud there and one bud there that are coming. And this bloom is fully completed. So that's beautiful. I'm eager to see these grow up. Both of these shrubs will grow into small trees. They'll get tall and break the um, fence line and add some uh, privacy between the yard and the driveway and just really be nice evergreen accents down here. And then the dragon ladies tie in nicely as well. I also did a tiny bit of work up on this end of the of the garden. Um, you remember this is the Cassora Purus japonica, the, uh, which is also called Japanese Andromeda. 
This is the Jerry Hill Camellia. It's still going strong. It's got lots of beautiful blooms on it, especially this trio down here. Isn't that spectacular? It's just so amazing to me. It's so beautiful. And then there's some down there by the soil. Oh, it's just so pretty. And we still have buds coming. So this one is really, really beautiful. I'm very happy with that. Again, that'll grow into a small tree. Um, what I did today was I planted these two um, bleeding hearts, the Dicentra spectabilis, 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 I don't know, Dicentra. Uh, I planted them here and they'll blend nicely with the one I already have back here and the little one that's poking its head up back there. Um, so I'll have a nice little spring display here surrounding this Fothergilla plant, which is just starting to come into blossom. This is a bottle bush, bottle brush shrub. Also, uh, there's another name for it, but I forget. Um, so this will be a nice spring display. And then I anticipate next spring, I'll put in some tulips and or daffodils along in here too. And I haven't decided what color, what would you suggest? I'm thinking white to go with all the pink or maybe yellow and white to go with all the pink or maybe pink and white. I don't know, what do you think? Another thing I did today was I transplanted one astilbe from down by the stage. This is another astilbe that I had transplanted from down that area as well a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago. And so now they're both here. These are, uh, you know what, I forget what color. I think they're white, but I'm not sure. And then finally over on this area, again, this is under this um, unidentified tree that I don't know what it is. Um, I put in three columbines. So after these plants mature, they'll put out beautiful spring flowers as well. And uh, so this is gonna be a nice spring display area. And then I need to be thinking about what to do for summer interest and autumn interest and winter interest because I got spring covered pretty darn well. The camellia is evergreen, the pyrus is evergreen, the tea olive is evergreen, so those will be here all winter, but all the hostas go away and all the plants here go away except this tree here. So thinking about uh, summer and fall and winter interest in this area, let me know what you think. It's a new day, new planting uh, opportunities await. I am putting a trumpet vine on this chain link fence. I may live to regret it because I'm told that trumpet vines can be extremely aggressive. However, I'm looking for something that will rapidly grow and cover up this broken fence panel. This doesn't belong to me, it belongs to my neighbor. And I don't think they have any plans anytime soon to fix this fence. So I'm gonna hide it. So trumpet vine Indian summer going up that pole and across this uh, and I'm hoping that in the summertime it will totally cover this fence. And if I regret it later, I will just live with my decision. Uh, I've taken out one of these four azaleas so far. Uh, it was right there. Um, so I've taken it out and I have not yet decided where I'm going to plant it, but one contender is right here. Um, I need to amend the soil. Uh, I think the color would look nice with the Laura Petalum. But also I think that that color would look nice with the lower petalum, so maybe that one will go here. Uh, so decisions, decisions. Okay, here we are at the end of Saturday, day two of this uh, update. And we've got more sod cut out from the uh, arbor um, location over to the stage. Is all cut out back to, uh, and a little bit behind, the viburnum. So that's good. We've got another two square yards of this area cut out today. And I've got some compost spread on most of it, but not all of it. Uh, let's see, what else? We've got uh, the other day, yesterday, we planted this and this. Today, I transplanted one of the azaleas. I put one right there. And then the other one I put back there next to the holly and the fence and these hydrangeas. And then the third one I moved to up here. Uh, this is up in my springtime area where I put bleeding hearts and columbines and astilbes yesterday. So we'll have the 
Fothergilla, which will get big, and the azalea, which will get big, and they'll intermingle, and that's fine. I like that. They're both slow growers, so it's fine. Uh, we got the snow azaleas are getting ready to pop out right here. So it'll be nice to have white azalea here, a pink one there, the feather gilla there, and columbines and bleeding hearts and the camellia down the way. So this is a nice spring garden that I mentioned earlier. So that's good progress. And also Dave started to lay sod uh, in this picnic table area. So that'll be coming along and starting to look a little bit less like a big hole in the lawn. So good progress today. We are going to come back at it tomorrow and continue the work on the backyard renovation. Well, the weekend slipped away from me before I got everything done, but oh well. So I think you already saw that I planted the blue point and the lower petalum here right at the top of the fence near the, uh, what's that, limelight. I've decided I'm going to put the three small nandinas. These are the firepower nandinas. These get to be about two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. Um, so I'm going to put them in a kind of a curvy swoop around the lower petalum. Now, the lower petalum is going to get six by six. What, Jenny? This is way too close. Yes, well, I do plan to, as the lower petalum gets taller and wider, I will be limbing up the bottom so that you can see its legs. And that way, these little two to three feet tall shrubs around it will form a nice little grouping that will swoosh from the fence around to the blue point. And then underneath the lower petalum, um, you'll see these, th there will be room for these, and then you'll have the lower petalum uh, foliage up here. Now, I like this combination because of the colors involved. We've got the chartreuse and red uh, interest on the firepower nandinas. These are a beautiful plant. I really love them. They've got red stems, red under the leaves, and the new foliage is kind of reddish also. So this is gonna look really nice next to the dark plum red of the lower petalum. It also will have that chartreuse accent. You know, you like to have kind of um, within view, you wanna have some chartreuse, some red, some bluish green, and some true green. And so that's what we have going on here. So I'm gonna cite these here. And then I'll have you know room to do uh, swaths of perennials or annuals um, along here. In the early years, while these are small, I can put some annuals in here, but as time goes by, these will grow together and it'll be a nice, um, a nice little collection here that gives winter interest, I think. And then there will be perennials and annuals all up in this space as well. Next, I wanted to cite one of my boxwoods down here by this camellia. My vision for this is that this uh, tea olive is going to grow tall and just kind of shrubby, woody, nice foliage, uh, just a column kind of. And then the camellia will do something similar. It will get tall also, but it's going to have glossy dark leaves against the oblong leaves here. Um, and there's similar coloration on the old leaves but the camellia is glossier. This is more of a matte and the new leaves here are a brighter green. So uh, there's more color interest in some of the year on the tea olive. This is uh, Tritoscantia, the spiderwort. It can come or go. I mean, it's, I'm happy to leave it there this year while I've got lots of room in the garden, but that is not a long-term prospect. So then I was thinking that the glossy green of the winter gem boxwood would be really nice. It'll be a ball shape here next to a column of glossy dark leaves, next to a column of more matte 
leaves. And so um, in front of this, I'll be able to put annuals or perennials. In the early years, they're all gonna be small. Again, the story of the garden. But I'm thinking that the spacing here is gonna be fine. This can get wide. I can also trim it so that it's not wide. And this can get to be, I think, what did it say? Three to four feet high, high and wide. I'm not sure, but it's gonna be a sphere here and then a column of foliage there. So that'll be a nice winter accent there. Hopefully you saw the video where we put up the arbor. I'm so excited about it. Just got finished today and the video for that is coming out before this video. So if you didn't see it, go back and take a look. I think in front of the arbor on both sides, I'm gonna put, uh, this is a green mountain boxwood. I'm gonna get one more to put on this side and then they're gonna get trained into a pyramid shape. Green mountains are great because they're taller than they are wide. They get four to five feet tall, two to three feet wide. And so I think this is gonna be a great spot to have a little bit of a formality right in front of this arbor. And um, so I need to pick up one more of these, get them planted in the ground and start growing a beautiful pyramid boxwood there. The rest of my boxwoods that I purchased the other day, I have got plans to put them up here on this end of the garden. First of all, in this little uh, island bed, we have a juniper, a stand of daffodils that go, this goes away here in a little bit, and then I put annuals in that spot. Uh, the juniper is filled in really nicely, most of the width of this bed. Um, used to be much smaller, of course. Uh, we've got some hosta. This is my standard green hosta that I can take or leave, but it does nice filling for me right now. So I'm happy to leave it there until I have something else that I like better to put in here. This is daylilies. That's more daffodils. That's going away. And then right in here, this is a goldenrod, and it's the fireworks version of goldenrod. And these grow taller than the birdbath, and they put out big sprays of yellow beauty in the fall. However, they are too wild and too naturalistic for this area here by the patio, by the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transplant the um, fireworks goldenrod out of this spot, hopefully get it all, and then I'm going to plant this um, winter gem boxwood right here and so that will have a nice evergreen ball interest in the long run it'll be a nice sphere right here and it'll be beautiful all winter long and it will balance with the juniper that's on the front of this island bed and so from the porch or from the sidewalk you'll be able to see greenery here all year and greenery here all year and then the daffodils and the hostas and the day ladies come and go all right I'm gonna put another boxwood right over here this is one of the uh, winter gems again, the glossy, glossy leaves. And it's gonna go right here. This is daisies, daffodils, hostas, hostas, more daisies. Um, this is Virginia bluebells, and this is the contorted uh, hazel or the contorted filbert. Um, so I think right here is gonna be a nice place for another sphere of uh, evergreen in the winter. This is right in front of the Nellie Stevens holly as well. So more winter interest in this area. Also, having this green right here will provide a backdrop through, uh, in front of which you will be able to see this contorted shape of this shrub against the green. So that'll be nice. All right, another boxwood I'm going to put back in here. This is the largest of the ones that I bought, and I think that it's nice to put the largest one into the most established garden. So it's gonna, for now, I think I've got it sited right there. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with these planters. We might get two more, we might take this one out. I don't know, but I think the boxwood going there will be a nice spot to have a sphere. That again will be, I think, three to four feet tall and wide. I'm not sure about that exactly. As they're slow growers, so who knows how long it'll take it to get that big. But anyway, I do have a sphere here, and then we'll have another sphere there, and then we'll come around this way, and we'll, down the way, we'll have another sphere. This uh, pyramid, Alberta spruce, which is dying out at the bottom, it's probably going to come out uh, in the short term. I'll probably replace it with a container with something in it. Um, and then I'll consider whether I want to put a boxwood in that location as well or somewhere around in here. Right now I've got Black Eyed Susans right here, but they could, of course, move. Perennials are totally movable. All right. And then I think I have to... 
Oh, yeah, still three more. I have the green velvet boxwoods. These are little teeny tiny ones I got for $10 each. I'm going to put one on either side of this gate, and that'll add just a tiny bit of formality right there. They're so small. I mean, they're not even eight inches in diameter right now, but they'll grow eventually, and this will be nice to have a ball here and a ball here. And if I see them struggle even the tiniest little bit because of this black walnut, I'll pop them out and put them into containers and still have nice uh, formality on either side of that gate. And then I also have the third one here in front of this um, pillar. I'm going to actually move the Lenten rose out to this spot and put the boxwood in that spot. And then up against the pillar will be a nice spot. And I might pick up two more to put one over there and one over there, but I'm not sure about putting one there because of this one. So we'll just see. But for now, I think this one's gonna go here. Well, here's a quick addendum to my weekend update video. As you saw on that video, I needed one more green mountain boxwood so that I could have a pair of them trained into a pyramid in front of the new arbor. So I came to my place where I do a lot of my plant shopping just out here at my home improvement store. And I was looking for one green mountain boxwood in the one gallon size for $9.98. I found it, but guess what else I found? Yeah, I'm guilty, so guilty. Here's my green mountain that I came for. This little guy right here. And the rest of it is, well, let's just say we have a large yard, it's being renovated, it has a lot of space. So, <laughs> So I got two more Green Mountains, just because these were the last two on the shelf. I got really lucky and I felt like it's destined to be mine because otherwise it wouldn't have been there. Anybody else feel that way? And then I'm loving this variegation on this. This is a Euonymus, it's I think Silver Princess. It's a Monrovia exclusive plant, I think is a trademark name, Silver Princess, yeah. So I got two of those because I just really am loving the um, variegation on it. They do need full sun, so they'll be getting a spot along either the north or the south fence in the backyard. This is a dwarf Alberta spruce. What, why are you buying that? Jenny, you already have it. Yeah, well, the one I have is dying at the bottom. And so I decided to buy another one and put it in a pot because I like the shape of it in that spot in the garden. So I wanted to have it. So I'm going to care for it in a pot and then it won't die from the, um, the uh, black walnuts in the backyard. Well, then I needed a pot, and so then I found this. This is one of those fiberglass, plasticky, lightweight things, but I think they're really pretty. I got three of them. Just because I don't want to have a random smattering of a bunch of different styles of pots, I want my pots in the garden to kind of be cohesive. So I decided to go with this for the dwarf Alberta spruce, and I might also put a boxwood in one of these, and then the third one, I don't know yet. But then I saw these, and I thought, well, those match our fence really well. So I got two of those wooden square planters that I'm going to put boxwoods in. Those are the, um, let's see, two of the green velvet. And they're the little, this little size, actually they're even smaller than this, but I'm going to plant the green velvet boxwoods into these white planters and flank the, um, the gate in the backyard with that. So I think that'll be really nice. And then, okay, what else? Strawberries. Well, I have tried three different bare root strawberry plantings and none of them are doing anything. So I decided to just bite the bullet, buy a couple of plants, did that. Okay, I got some sugar snap peas because I love munching on sugar snap peas and they also are nice to grow up a uh, trellis. And I have sweet peas that I'm gonna be putting. I might put these on the same trellis as that or I might find an another trellis. So I got two of those peas. I got two different tomatoes. Both of these are cherry tomatoes. One of them is Sun Sugar, which was recommended to me by a friend. And the other is Super Sweet 100, which is a perennial favorite of mine. We've used that one very successfully in the past. And then finally, I picked up one of these Proven Winners container uh, ready pot things. This has bubblegum pink uh, Super Tunias. It's got, oh gosh, I forget the names of them. Okay, let's see. It's got bubblegum, it's got royal velvet, super tunia, and it's got snowstorm blue. Uh, I don't know what that is, but this, this little one is snowstorm blue. And then somewhere in here, there's the uh, the other super tunia. So that'll be a, just a nice thing. And I might stick that in this pot as well. That might be the third thing. So there you go. It's a disease, I tell you, it's a disease. Don't let me near a garden center at this time of year. The only thing is, I know I've got planting space for all of these and more. So. It's just a matter of budgeting and being smart and mm, 
Anyway, I'm a plant lover, what can I say? Anyway, thanks so much, have a good day, bye. This is the placement of the white planters. And by the way, we are going to clean and paint the white fence this year, so that will be looking very spiffy very soon. Uh, the one on the left is the orientation that the planters will actually be. Of course, they're not gonna be upside down. And the one on the right is mimicking roughly the size and shape of the evergreen um, in a couple of years after it grows a little bit. Obviously, it won't be that tall because the pot has to go inside the planter. Anyway, so that is that. And then over this way, I have placed the new dwarf Alberta spruce roughly into one of the new pots. It's gonna replace that dead looking one. I may or may not try to save the dead looking one and do something with it elsewhere, but for now, anyway, it's just gonna get replaced. I'm thinking the variegated uh, euonymus, which get only two by two or three by three at the most, will go here. I got two of them. And I think that I will do a very informal, subtle, um, kind of gate with them uh, through this walkway here and so in the winter nothing else in this bed stays except sometimes the iris foliage stays but mostly nothing in this bed stays everything dies back to the ground and so it will be nice to have um, the euonymus there as an evergreen with that variegated interest um, over this way just barely starting to live is one of my free service berries that the city of Baltimore gave me last year. Um, it's only two feet tall right now. It only has about eight inches worth of foliage cover right now, but in, you know, five, 10 years, that'll be a nice small tree right here and the euonymus will look nice with it as well. Um, I know that my torch thing is crooked. I should fix it. And I need to refill the hummingbird feeder. Anyway, euonymus here and there, I think it'll be subtly kind of a nice entrance gate kind of symmetric on either side, but not rigidly formal in that way. And then the same thing is happening down this way um, on the arbor. I'm not gonna walk all the way down there, but you can see that we'll put um, the green mountain boxwoods on both sides and we will train those into pyramids. So that'll be a nice little gate there, a little bit of symmetry. And then around this way is where I've decided to place the other green mountain that I bought today so if I back out a little bit here, sorry about the hose being in the way, you'll see that on the left we have the blue point juniper and on the right we'll have a pyramid shaped green mountain boxwood. They're not exactly the same and they're not exactly symmetric around the corner, but similar, similar shape, similar color tones. The blue point of course is a little more blue color and the green mountain is more of a true green. Um, anyway, I like to kind of sort of have symmetry, but not necessarily rigidly have symmetry. So I think it'll be nice to have a pyramid here and a pyramid here with the fluffy um, hydrangea in the center. And then throughout here, I am going to be putting annuals, perennials, and maybe one of the fairy roses. Probably actually, I'm not sure. And then on this fence, I've ordered a climbing rose, Eden, um, and it hasn't arrived yet, but it's going to be planted on the other side of the fence, but it will come up the fence and across somewhat like the new dawn does on the porch, but this one will be on the fence. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put the fairy here or not. I don't necessarily need two roses right beside each other, but why not? We'll see. I don't know. Anyway. And then the other small things that I got, I just tucked in here, down here on my little nursery. These are my seeds that I had at indoors under lights um, for the last couple of months. I brought them out when I did my seed status update. You might want to check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. And these have all been nicely living outside. We've had mostly uh, cloud covered days. And so I don't think anything got damaged and they have all really benefited from being outside. They're starting to put on some um, more mature growth. Oh, the Canterbury Bells need something to happen with them. They're sitting in water. Let's drain that out for them. Get that water out of there. Okay, so um, anyway, these are all pretty much doing pretty well and they could get into the ground anytime now. They're definitely hardened off. But anyway, I hid my little uh, tomatoes, strawberries, and pea plants here and my annual pot there. Um, not really hiding it, necessarily. I mean, Dave has told me he doesn't really watch my YouTube channel. So honestly, I'm not sure if he'll notice. <laughs> he will definitely notice the um, planters and the new dwarf Alberta spruce. I'm not sure if he'll notice the variegated um, shrubs. We'll see. He might because they're right at the entrance to the backyard, but also he might not. I don't know. 
he might just wonder if I bought that another time. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything from him, of course. Uh, but we did have a little bit of an elbow ribbing going on yesterday about the number of plants that I've been buying and when is it going to stop. But uh, we also agreed that, yeah, the yard's not done. We can still buy more plants. So anyway, so that's what's happening here. I've really extended the end of this video past what I thought it was going to be. So I'll say another goodbye. Thanks again for watching. And I hope to see you again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.